Guys, Krosev here. Hope everyone's doing well. Uh, today I wanted to give you a quick status update on the channel, what's going on in my life, as well as what's going on with the mobile. Show you what I've done to it so far, what we're looking to do with it, and maybe get some input on how I can make some of this content flow uh, a little better and a little more frequently because, uh, as I'm sure you're aware, I haven't gotten content out as frequently as I'd like to. So, without further ado, let's go ahead and uh, take a look at what I've done so far. So nothing's really changed a whole lot on the outside from last time you saw it. I still have the GPS there that was used for um, the Android tablet that's built into the dash here. Um, I've got my 220 antenna, the 2 meter 440 dual band. Uh, this one on the far end has actually been switched out. This is now an antenna for both the SDRs and the scanner. I've got this for 2 meter APRS only. Um, these two outer ones will get painted here at some point. This one here is getting switched out. That's going to be my new 900 antenna for the amateur band, and then the Puck GPS that I use for the Windows tablet. Coming around to the back, we've got the 2 meter radio. That's an ICOM, uh, I think it's an IC2000H. Um, that's for my APRS. I might switch it out with one of these at some point, but I haven't had a chance to get it programmed and everything, so there it sits. And then that's the DC scanner that, if you recall, I got for $40 because the screen was tore up and I control it over serial anyway. So we got a couple of splitters there that kind of bring everything together. Uh, there is a bit of loss, but the SDRs make up for it enough that I haven't had a problem with it. Um, and that's all just kind of tied together with a USB hub that goes up to the front here. So go ahead and step into the vehicle. And I'll show you what we have in here. I'm trying to make some consideration so it's not too loud. I already recorded this twice. I'm going to put my key in the on position because these two are currently off at the moment. This is the 900 radio. That's a uh, GTX. Uh, I'm going to show you a video about this a little bit later. I'll talk about it here more in a second. This is a Motorola Spectra. This is my 2 meter radio that does analog and uh, P25. We've got the TYT2000, uh, excuse me, the TYT9000D. This is my 220 radio. And then we have the XTVA for my XTS5000 Model 3. This is my 70 centimeter UHF radio. And this actually pops out of here if you didn't see the last video. And I can kind of take it around with me. So that goes to my little control head. I'm going to switch the car back to accessory. That's going to kill these two radios, but that's fine. We've got the in-dash tablet here. This is used for a plethora of things. We've got RF analyzer, GPS, scanner stuff, um, you name it. This can do um, aircraft tracking as well. I do have an antenna that is up here for the tablet, um, the in-dash tablet. This will get switched out at some point, but... Uh, because this does need a dedicated SDR, I have it set up that way at the moment. Uh, the SDR software usually runs. It actually had just crashed because um, I reloaded the driver. So if I go into the glove box and replug it, usually if uh, you run... The RF Analyzer app, regardless of your device, has always been a little finicky. If you run it once and then try to restart it, it doesn't want to restart. You need to actually reboot the device or you need to disable the, uh, the driver and re-enable it. Sometimes unplugging the USB device for a moment fixes it, but in this case it doesn't look like it's going to, so that's fine. It does work, but I'm not going to go through the hassle of reloading it on video. And then we have the tablet here. Um, not a whole lot has changed with the tablet except for this guy here. This is uh, APRS IS32, so that's my APRS tracking software. Oh, that's my scanner coming through. So once this software loads up, this will be so, yep. So there's my uh, DigiPeter that gives us coverage here in the county. And uh, you can see where I'm currently sitting here in the park. So this does both tracking and messaging. Um, it's the full-blown Windows software. It's really nice to kind of have in the mobile here. Um, switch back. We've got my scanner software. Not a lot of that has changed. I am trying to get the auxiliary output to uh, function on this, so that way I can uh, record interesting things that come up on the scanner. And then the two things I really need some input on here, 
Um, as far as recording videos in the future, you can see I have a mount here, which is intended to record my face. And then there's a mount back here to record the road. And then I've got this guy. And the idea of this one was going to be to record the tablet itself and the in-dash unit so I could mux all the video together and make a coherent video that I could then offer up on YouTube. But this tends to shake a bit. I mean, it doesn't take much for that to rock. And it just doesn't look that great. I can't do direct capture on this because it doesn't have a decent graphics card. It's a tablet. Um, and, and this one is running an older version of Android, and I can't get it to capture video worth a shit either. So I don't have a good way of capturing video from these. Any suggestions on how I can do that better would be greatly, greatly appreciated. Um, but that is more or less what we have going on in the mobile. Now, let me go ahead and shut the car off because um, I don't want my battery to die while I'm finishing up the video here. Two other things that I'm working on. This is a VHF uh, pyramid repeater. So this is meant for uh, in-band or cross-band repeating. This is a VHF model, which I can't really use in my case because you're not supposed to use two meters as your control channel. So I do have a UHF model coming in. The port that actually handles your um, push to talk, your squelch detect and everything uses a standard serial port DV9. It's not like RS-232. Um, it just happens to use this port. So what I'm thinking is that I can get a serial port uh, three-way or a four-way switch I'll get the UHF model of this, put it in the car. So this is going to be 2 watts UHF. So the idea with this is I can take my XTS 5000 out of the XTVA when I'm mobile, and I just need to, you know, say, walk around this park, whatever, wherever I'm at. I can flip a switch to turn on my repeater, and then I'll have a little two- to four-way switch, maybe under the seat or something, that I can flip. So I can talk on 70 centimeters and come out on a 220 repeater or a simplex channel. I can come out on a 2 meter channel. I could come out on 900 megahertz. And I could do all of that from my uh, 440 UHF portable. Um, and I think it's going to come out really nicely. I'll basically just have this running to one of those switches. And then I'll have to make a cable that goes from the back of that switch to each one of my uh, mobile radios. So we'll see how all that comes out. There is a modification for the 220 to put a DB9 on the back, which I'll take advantage of. The Motorola gear is made to do that, so I'm not too concerned about it. Um, I don't know if the XTVA can or not, but I'm not going to bother with in-band. I'm just going to cross-band. So I don't even have to worry about that. That's going to be my control point. But uh, that is more or less it. If you guys have any comments or suggestions, I'd greatly appreciate it. Um, I'm really hoping to make some more content here in the future. My biggest concern right now is getting the car set up in a way that I can record video while I'm out and about that is both safe while I'm driving, but also going to be able to handle long record times. Because obviously when I'm driving around, I don't necessarily hear something interesting on the radio. I might drive around for an hour before I find something interesting. Um, you know, for example, I was recently driving past a giant eagle, and I found one of the, uh, they use a terminal, uh, it's in the 440 band, well, not amateur, but it's in the UHF band. And uh, they're using it for, uh, you know, keeping track of inventory. And it would be really cool to decode that. And I was listening to it, and I can pull it up on my SDR. And it's nice to be able to kind of sit here in the mobile, pull into the parking lot, and then go through that. Um, and, you know, kind of see what it is, try to decode it, and do all that right here rather than record it, go back home, and try and figure it out there. Although, of course, that is an option once I get some of the more uh, recording functionality added. Um, you know, So there is that aspect of it. Uh, my biggest concern is how do I record my tablet screen and my in-dash screen without looking like crap when I go to put it on YouTube? And, of course, there's going to be a lot of editing. Um, the other thing is this 900 radio... I do want to make a video on that if anyone's interested. The 900 radio um, was not capable of going into the amateur band. I had to expand those limits. Uh, it's all programmed in DOS. I actually ended up using FreeDOS using a Dell laptop that had a real serial port on it and just ran FreeDOS off a flash drive. Uh, you have to hex edit the software um, in a way that will expand those limits and then it'll let you program what you want and i thought i'd make a cool video to show you how i converted the hex that motorola uses from traditional hex that you're probably familiar with and how to make those band limits wider 
so that you can then out of band program a commercial radio into the ham band. Um, I think that's everything I wanted to say. Um, on a personal note, um, I've been incredibly busy. That's part of the reason why I haven't really made a whole lot of content. Um, we're trying to save up to buy a house and try and move. Uh, right now, I'm kind of living out of a, a bedroom. I really don't have a lot of space. And, you know, keep in mind, I have a fiancé and a almost four-year-old. Um, I don't have a ton of room. Um, you know, he's got one room for himself, and, and me and my fiancé share a room, and that's all we have. So... Uh, you know, you add in all the craziness that I want to do. Um, it, it's honestly kind of what spawned what happened to the car here because I, I needed that place where I could go and do my own thing and get into my radio stuff and I couldn't put a bunch of antennas up at the house. So I drilled them all into my car, <laughs> but I'd like to share this with you guys and show you, you know, what's going on and, and start making more content again. So any suggestions on how I might pull this off? So I can make content in the vehicle safely, but, you know, in a way that I can still show you guys some cool stuff. Obviously, I'm going to pull over into a parking lot if we're playing with the tablet and trying to find stuff. So um, I think I was going to show you some more stuff on uh, on the tablet and that, but I mean, I guess you guys have seen a lot of it already. Um, the only other thing I have to say, I guess, is that, um, you know, in the next week or two, I'm actually going to Illinois for a training um, event. Um, something through work that uh, is going to be really, really interesting and beneficial on my end. So hopefully things all pan out and uh, we'll be able to make some more content and stuff. Um, and I really want to thank all of my subscribers that actually take the time to watch my content and give me feedback because I wouldn't be here without you guys. Um, you know, part of the fun is building this stuff. Part of the fun is using it. But I really, truly enjoy uploading my content, teaching people how to do stuff. And I love hearing... Um, even just the reactions to, you know, some of the crazy stuff that I try to pull off. And, um, you know, it, it makes my day better when, you know, I get a message on my phone. And I find out that, you know, I've got 20 people that are like, oh, wow, you know, Corrosive's car is kind of nuts. And, you know, that it, it makes me smile to see, you know, somebody thought that was cool or, or somebody was inspired to do something because of what they saw me doing. And, um, you know, it, it's definitely a boost. So, um, again, I appreciate it, guys. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the video. I know it was kind of just a long-winded um, set of me talking, but I hope you enjoyed it anyway, and uh, I will see you guys in the next one.